Gavin Warren recently released a video entitled The Papacy Isn't From God. Joe Heschmeyer and Trent Horn responded. Today, I want to offer what I found in a book from Jerry Walls and his co-author Collins, Roman but not Catholic. They actually give a mathematical argument against the papacy that aligns and supports Gavin's main point. When you look at the earliest sources, they're silent about a pope in Rome. And so kind of when you do the math and you look at Walls and Collins' probabilities, it's um, pretty brutal. Because if the papacy was divinely instituted from the beginning, if Peter was the first pope and his authority was passed successively in Rome, we should expect the earliest Christian sources to at least mention it. But they don't. Clement, writing from Rome, silent. Ignatius, who names bishops everywhere else, silent about Rome. Justin Martyr, teaching in Rome itself, silent. This silence, Ortland argues, is evidence that no monarchal bishop, no pope, existed in first century Rome. Heschmeyer gives this Ignatian syllogism. Ignatius says churches needed bishops. Ignatius calls Rome a church. Therefore, Rome had a bishop. Maybe logically valid, but there's a lot of uh, gaps. Horn argued that, hey, the best explanation of the data is that, you know, there must have been like Peter's primacy in scripture and early appeals to Rome and Irenaeus' uh, uh, succession list. There's got to be some sort of pope there. But the, there's a problem. When you actually calculate things using Bayesian probability theory, it gets pretty devastating. So here's the key question. If a monarchal bishop exists in Rome, what's the probability that at least one of our four earliest sources would have mentioned him? So when you go step by step, probability that these like figures would notice such a figure, these authors would notice, that's pretty high, around 95%. Probability they record it, pretty high. Probability it would survive, just take historical preservation rates. So the combined calculation is 87% probability we'd have evidence if a pope existed. Yet, we have no such evidence. Complete silence from all four sources. It's only 13% that probable that this silence would occur if the papal office existed. When you add in some recent work by Joshua Sidgwadi, you get independent evidence that reduces the likelihood of these Catholic claims down to approximately 0 0.00. So Hesmeyer's syllogism and Horn's cumulative case can't overcome 99.998% probability against their position. When rigorous methodology meets historical evidence, Sometimes the numbers reveal what centuries of debate obscured.